Hi guys, Jimmy here and welcome back to my art life. Now for today's episode, we will be using touch alcohol markers to color Umi from Magic Knight Rares. But before we start, make sure you have your swatch sheet ready to easily pick out the right marker color to use. Don't also forget your reference image so that you can match the colors to the correct marker color. Although I have a 60 color set, it still doesn't have the exact color match so in cases like these, I just choose the closest color I have in the set. I'm also planning to buy the complete set of 168 colors so that I have more colors to work with and choose from. Regarding Magic Knight Rare Earth, it is a popular anime series during the 90s. It's full of action, sword fighting, and most of all magic. So if you haven't watched the series yet, I suggest you do, and I'm sure you'll very much enjoy watching it and you'll fall in love with the characters and their journey in saving Sephiro. I don't want to give too much information and spoilers, but you'll be surprised at the twist in the end. So if you have watched the series though, uh, you go ahead and leave a comment to let us know what you love most about the series and tell us who's your favorite among the three main characters. So going back to our illustration, again we are coloring Umi Ryuzaki and she is one of the three main protagonists of the Magic Knight Rares manga and anime series. She's the magic knight that represents the water element. If you have watched the Tagalog version of the series, Umi's name was changed to Marina. And I personally think Marina fits her character much better in terms of international relevance, although in Japanese, Umi means sea or ocean. Now, let me also tell you a little bit about Umi's backstory. Like the other two main characters, Umi was also on a school trip to Tokyo Tower and her school consisted mostly of girls, which are daughters of rich people like herself. At one moment, she suddenly heard voices calling her, referring to her as a magic knight. So in that moment, she was transported to another world called Zephyro, along with two other girls from different schools, namely Hikaru Shiro and Fuho Oji. Umi was the first to revive her rude god, Ceres. So the god was also called as Celis or Celis, but I would like to refer to her rune god as Ceres. Her test involved about whether she had to choose over helping her friends who were under attack by Ascot or embrace with a ritual to achieve the rune god's power. Eventually, Umi chose the first and declared that she didn't need a rune god if it meant to desert her friends. This however was the purpose of the test and she passed it. Cyrus awoke and granted his strength to the magic knights but he would vanish until the other rune gods awakened. In the manga, during the test, Umi became angry at Ascot about misusing his beast friends as monsters, to the point that she eventually slapped him. Even so, she still kindly asked him to be their friend, and Ascot eventually accepted the offer, defecting from Sagato's side. In the anime, this event takes place in a journey shortly after reviving Ceres. Because of her fencing background, the weapon that she uses is a fencing-like sword. Her technique is thrust and parry, which usually gives the enemy a one-hit KO. She is also the fastest one among the three magic knights and second only in offense under Hikaru. Her technique concentrates more on affecting the enemy and boosting her speed. As a water knight, Umi specialized in water-related magic spells. So here are the three spells that she has. First one is Water Dragon or Mizo no Ryu. Umi's first spell that was conjured by her to protect Hikaru who was fighting a losing battle against Alcyone. This attack comes in the form of a large eastern dragon that was hurled at the enemy. This is the spell that she uses the most. The next is Sapphire Whirlwind or Blue Water Spouts. In Japanese it's Aoi Tatsumaki. Umi's second spell, which she learned when she was tested in the Fountain of Eterna, 
In there, Umi had to strengthen her heart in order to defeat the opponent, who took the form of her parents. This spell calls for a water tornado that can be used as a strong defense and also a powerful offensive attack. The third and last one is Icicle Blades, or Koori no Yaiba, Umi's last and most powerful spell. This spell summons an endless rain of sharp icicle blades that is directed to the opponent. The spell came to her while she was protecting the princesses of Chisera and Farin in the second season of the anime, and it first appeared in the fifth volume of the manga. Alright, so now let's add in a few more details to finish up our illustration for today, and I'll leave you to enjoy the rest of the video. Okay, and that's it for today's video and I hope you enjoyed our coloring session. And if you did, please consider subscribing. Thanks for hanging out with me today and I'll see you on the next video.